With something like cancer, you can't ethically do a randomized trial where you have half the people eat meat and you track their cancer risk and, and have the other become vegan. And, 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 and you, you, there are ethical issues about doing that because it is so clear that meat is linked to cancer. You couldn't, get, you couldn't do such a study. You couldn't ask uh, half a group to smoke cigarettes. We know cigarettes cause cancer. We know meat is going to increase cancer risk. Once you have such consistent evidence, you have to, d to make this decision. And back in 2007, the American Institute for Cancer Research said, look at hot dogs, bologna, all the processed meats, and colorectal cancer. And they concluded the evidence was so convincing. They said the amount you should feed a child, the amount you should eat yourself, was zero. Only 5 to 10 percent of cancer is in our genes, our family history. The other 90 to 95 percent of cancer risk is caused by what we expose our bodies to. Diet, if you include obesity and alcohol, makes up about 50 percent of our cancer risk. Anything about our diet in particular? From a massive new study in Canada last year, total meat consumption was directly related to the risk of not only stomach cancer, but colon cancer, and rectal cancer, and pancreatic cancer, and lung cancer, and breast cancer, and prostate cancer, and testicular cancer. The NIH AARP study had a half a million participants. They were followed for 10 years. Some of them didn't eat meat or didn't eat very much. Some ate quite a lot of meat. And what they showed was that among those eating the most meat, the risk of dying of cancer was increased by fully 20% and heart disease deaths were increased by 27% among men and 50% among women. And in 2012, the Archives of Internal Medicine published another study. 120,000 people, this was coordinated all at Harvard University, and it showed exactly the same thing. If you ate a lot of meat, your risk of dying of heart disease was much higher, your risk of dying of cancer was higher. And studies have clearly shown that people who don't eat meat cut their cancer risk by anywhere between 12 and 40 percent. The relationship uh, between uh, eating meat and cancer and coronary heart disease are also observational studies, and they also tell us absolutely nothing about cause and effect relationships. If I went to your farm and I got one of your chickens, never had even a, any chemical given to, the, to the, that chicken, but if I killed them and cooked them, we, the, these same heterocyclic amines, these clear-cut carcinogens would form on your chickens just like any other. So regardless of whether, uh, of, of whether it's organic or not, cooking skeletal muscle produces carcinogens. And that's why every epidemiologist agrees that vegetarians have less cancer. There's just no question about it. She's 90. She's, she's eating meat day one all of her life. The fact is, we're different. We, we are we're different. different. Most smokers don't get lung cancer. That's right. Yeah. Most smokers don't get lung cancer, but so many do. Most meat eaters are not going to get col colorectal cancer, and they're not going to get stomach cancer, but so many do. We set up an experiment with three groups. The first group did nothing, control group. The second did diet and exercise, and the third group was just exercise. The diet and exercise group had been put on a plant-based diet for 14 years, along with moderate exercise, just like walking every day. The second group was just exercise, but they were hardcore. Right? Uh, not just exercise, but 14 years of daily strenuous hour-long exercise like calisthenics. But they ate the standard American diet. Let's see who's better at fighting cancer. The researchers wanted to know if you exercise hard enough, long enough, can you rival some strolling vegans? They took petri dishes brimming full of human cancer cells and drip blood from each of the three groups on different dishes to see whose blood was better at suppressing cancer growth. What do you think they found? Whose blood was better at killing cancer cells? This is a graph measuring cancer cell apoptosis, or programmed cell death. Cancer cells programmed to commit suicide. It's one way our body gets rid of cancer cells. Basically, our immune system taps them on the shoulder and says, look, you know there's only one way this is going to end, don't you? Well, you take the honorable way out be quicker, easier. They start the chemo and everything. It's going to get messy. Take the easy way out and just kill yourself, which our immune system is sometimes capable of convincing cancer cells to do. Here's the blood of the 
control group. Not very persuasive. Cancer's like, take your programmed cell death and shove it. And as we saw before, here's the effect of the blood of those in the pritikin group. After 14 years on a plant-based diet, you can bet their bloodstream was clearing cancer cells left and right. But what about the hardcore exercise group in the middle? Did they clear cancer just as good as the pritikin group? If that's the case, then it wasn't diet at all, right? The exercise was a critical component. Were they somewhere in the middle, showing the exercise helped, but you know, not as good as a plant-based diet group? Or were they down there with the control group? Maybe exercise helped with other things, but you know, just not at killing cancer. And what they found was this. Exercise helped, no question, but literally 5,000 hours in the gym was no match for a plant-based diet. According to this survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Try camels yourself.